Free Run episode 14. I'm wondering how the sign's gonna shake up the whole party dynamic. First day together? He says for her sake, I love you, Free Run. Why don't you know how much I love you, Free Run? Notice me, Free Run. I wonder what it was exactly that created that strong of a glue for Himmel, looking at Free Run. I mean, just very generally, I can imagine they're similar in important ways, value wise, but very different in some really exciting ways for both of them. I also keep coming back to like, I mean, it's a lot of things. It's funny. It's also really tragic. It's also really sweet that Himmel, this great hero with statues all over the place, universally adored for being this great savior. The one person's attention that he wants the most, he never really got, it seems. And like he lived his life chasing that thing, that feeling. The lore of Free Run is so rich already i mean there's just so so much you could do with backstory like for example what did himmel do after the demon king besides like try to put himself in positions where f he would bump into free run episode 14 privilege of the young Fern, yeah. <laughs> okay Cutting right through it. <laughs> oh wow, it's already been a year. Oh, so you do care. Spoken in the room, not a, not a great, great move. So got that cigarette in. <laughs> I'm liking this dynamic already. <laughs> oh yes, couple counseling episode. Sane style. It took me way too long to find the idea of love languages and how like critical that is in understanding other people. The coolest thing about it for me being that you have to sort of step out of yourself a little bit. It forces you to exercise your empathetic or understanding muscles of other people. And from there, I mean, you just look at the person. People will tell you how much they care or don't care, but you have to sort of learn the language that they speak. I mean, maybe Stark just doesn't have any money, you know? It doesn't really seem like they earn money, it seems more like they earn books. Books and food. But there's a reason. We've only gotten Fern's fur side of the story so far. Oh, that's good. You're going to evaluate. ただ女慣れしていそうで不快です。嫌いなわけじゃないんだろ。同年代の男子との接し方がわからないだけだ。he says at the ripe old age of 23 or whatever. <laughs> forgive him, he's just an idiot. He did forget his own birthday. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. This is interesting. I didn't expect this this saying fern thing, but it actually works really well. Yeah, and like there's that parallel there because I mean I don't think they're really directly doing the thing where every party member of, of this party corresponds one to one with one of the previous party. They're kind of a blend, even if there's some overlap with their classes or abilities. But Sane does have a lot in common with Hyder, who is Fern's father. There's probably something really familiar and comforting there. Also, it's kind of credit to Fern's initial wariness of Sane, saying he's, he's too good with the women. <laughs> even knowing that, he just blasted through those defenses. In that light, also, it's interesting to think about the fact that Fern, the role she plays in this group with Freerin, might not be her natural disposition. It might just be like she has to fill the gaps and pick up the slack but like this feels natural somehow it feels like that soft part of her that we saw in her as a, as a kid and when she speaks about Hyder was given a little bit of a chance to come out <laughs> now I was gonna say to his party could apologize yeah tracks I'll also say, as somebody who does not really care about gifts at all, but really, really wants to do it well because I do care about people I care about. I want to do things in a way they would appreciate, even if it's not my natural tendency or the way I think about things. There's this fear spiral that forms that makes things really difficult that ends up looking like callousness when actually it's over concern. So like, let's say there's somebody I really like. I want to get them a gift. I'm just, I don't know. I just don't typically know what good gifts are. And then I go into a state of panic. Like, what am I going to do? If I get it wrong, it'll be terrible. And 
that creates paralysis. And then I spent days or weeks or whatever in that state of, of just like circular reasoning and not knowing what the hell to do. And then texting them like, what do you want for your birthday or whatever, you know? And then of course people don't answer that question. You know, in the past, sometimes it would end up, I just didn't get anything because it just felt terrible to do the wrong thing. The way I would reason it is getting a bad gift is worse than no gift. As I've gotten older, I just get a gift, you know, but then it's just terrible. The whole thing's terrible. But like, Critically, I really, really care. It's just, I can't express it through gifts or it's very difficult to express it through gifts. Sometimes I get it right. And then like, sometimes it's just not a good match. You know, like sometimes I think I have a really good gift and it's just not like the other person doesn't appreciate it. Once I went to Japan and I went to uh, a shrine and I got these charms. And then like, I went to the shrine and prayed at the shrine for the charms and then gifted the charms. And I picked charms that I thought were applicable to that person based on concerns they had expressed. I like it because it has a, like a narrative or story behind it and heart and like genuine warm regarded concern for the other person but at the same time like from the other perspective it's kind of a cheapo tourist gift you know <laughs> so i get it maybe not the best for like a girlfriend's birthday it's tough man i just think gift giving should be abolished or what i really like is this i'm good about now and then it'll occur to me that like oh this person could really benefit by having this thing and then i'll like immediately buy it but it doesn't correspond with like a special date or anything like if i know a problem or i know a want or desire i will like be happy to do that because it's it's clear, but like, it's a birthday. I have to assemble something now. I don't know. It's, it's much more difficult. Listening to myself talk, I'm realizing how important it is for me for some reason to be an advocate for this type of person, me and Stark. Another element of it is that I would actually categorize myself as a, a relatively generous spender, but I also don't like wasting money. So I don't consider it a waste at all if the person enjoys the thing I'm buying, but I really hate the idea of buying something expensive and the other person getting no utility from it. Another random thing is there's a reverse side to this. It's hard for me to receive gifts because when I get a gift, even if I love it, again, it's like a panic response where I'm like, I have to show how much I love it. And what that does is it suppresses my natural emotions and joy and it ends up being stilted and it looks like I don't enjoy it. It's it's a mess. I hate it. I hate the whole thing. I hate that. Okay. <laughs> Dangerous phrasing there, but it landed. The real birthday gift is the friends we made along the way. <laughs> and the present that Stark buys you. At least it's memorable. They have just like Batman spying on them. From the roof. They were looking after her a lot of the time. Like right, right, right. Hunter was, you know, he's a great man. He's also very human. He's an icon, so there's that separation mentally, but you know, he's just a dude. She says, smiling. Meaning you're even better. <laughs> you have great potential. Hatter was scared by his potential as a degenerate. All of these things can be true. Well, also, I mean, like, there were many different stages of Hatter's life. He quit drinking at some point. Weird, I was just thinking about this exact thing, and it's kind of horrifying. I was just thinking the other day, like, I live as an adult, I have an adult life. If I really think about it, though, I still have this childhood spirit. I still think of myself as being, like, a youth. I think I had imagined as a kid that there was this line you cross, and then, like, you have an adult mind. I'm an adult, but I don't think my mind has changed that much. Like, I've learned, I've grown, I'm definitely more mature, I can navigate life better. But in my core, there's still, like, direct, almost perfectly horizontal continuity to when I was, like, five years old. In a, in a key sense, it's hard to explain. I was wondering if people actually do have that feeling. Like, does anyone feel like they've crossed that line? Where, ah, like, now I'm an adult man, you know? Does anybody really feel like they have reached, like, some kind of kingly status as a human internally? It's great and terrible at the same time. It's terrible because it has a way of making the world and society feel suddenly so flimsy. Like, there's no authority, you know? There is no adult class. I mean, age definitely is not a one-to-one -one correlation with wisdom anyway, clearly. But aside from that, like, we're all just people. <laughs> and it sounds obvious, but when you really, really think about it, it's kind of horrifying. The great thing is it, it kind of, like, removes an imaginary barrier because it's not real like there is no barrier to to being great based on some kind of ephemeral label or quality or spirit of adulthood that possesses you it's you now and like all the people that you admire i would guess probably are very 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 similar to you like Hyder and himmel no doubt <laughs> 
大人のふりを続けるでしょう子供には心の支えになる大人の存在が必要です But, like, that begs the question, which one of us is the grown up? たくさん褒めて導いてあげないと kind of what I was getting at is like Fern is a kid, you know? She needs that role a little bit そのために女神様がいるんですよ Interesting, the adult is the goddess あなたに人間である私の気持ちはわからないでしょうどう褒めるつもりですか Gentle head pat, good boy. Underrated. <laughs> you see? Don't sleep on head pats, head rubs. I may be misreading it, but in this case, I'm going to take the goddess as an adult, being like ideals as the adult, ideals as the authority. Just lean into it and enjoy it. I'm pretty sure he means the really mature gravure. Gravure, is that the right word? Mature type. Do they have matching bracelets now? Yes. 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 Sorry, I gotta find it underneath all my accessories. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely some dark magic at work in that suitcase. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. For a second, I thought it was something dangerous. Poor horse. Did you lose the ring? Carrying things seems to be like the most draining use of mana that there is, based on that Blizzard episode. Zoltark has nothing on levitation. He makes a solid point. Magic moves pretty fast around here. That makes sense. Like a lot of magic, it seems. Or all magic. You don't need to make it fly, you just need to make it fall slowly. Like uh, Buzz Lightyear. I mean, you fought that, yeah, you fought that dragon in the air and lived, so... Speaking of passive stats, the gate's fall damage. Aizen did it. On his head, no less. It's possible he was severely injured, but like, who would know? He's also just like built like a brick. It's funny how magic is like math. We're a little bit off course here. Oh. And out she goes. <laughs> Okay, another great beast life lost. Guess we're doing math in the air. <laughs> Quick maths, poor horse. <laughs> horse doesn't know what the hell happened. What about your ring? Start landing on his head just like his master. I mean, all jokes aside, it kind of tracks that Magic could do really amazing things and then not do really simple things. It's kind of like life, you know? Magic is sort of a weird concept because it, it sort of by definition means things that are impossible. But there's a lot of pretty crazy magic-like things that we've accomplished. I mean, internet, lights, wireless phones, any of those would have been considered magic at some point. The magic of free reign has like a physical underpinning or a logical underpinning. Some things just wouldn't work until they figured it out at least. Oh. <laughs> and there it is, somewhat obviously. What I would consider to be the most important element of this whole thing. And it comes with the whole story. Just lucked into that one. Mission failed successfully. <laughs> now that time she meant it in an affectionate way. Stop. Let this birthday disaster end. <laughs> He's having a great time watching this whole thing. As am I. Oh yeah, here we go. Another Forest Life medley. 
We love it. You almost don't want to leave. Come to think of it, I think we finally caught up to making this ourselves in life. Like a lot of the things I see in reels and short form content these days from people I know are computer generated video montages of their travels. It works, it's effective. She's still looking for it. It could be anywhere. It meant a lot to her. Like, I don't know, how far did you travel with, with that bird? Yeah, I mean, it's not actually important, but like, I get why it's important. You have a spell or something? That is perfect. Wow. He knew what it meant. Probably gonna wear it from now on. Very dramatic kneeling. She was feeling stuff. We've seen that over and over again. I don't know, she either forgot or just, I don't know, wasn't processing it very clearly. It's not like it wasn't there. I'm glad that dude had that spell. But is the pine cone okay? <laughs> cool, sign actually being a great addition, I think. Especially for Fern, I guess for Stark as well. He, like, he adds a very weird to say, but fatherly element <laughs> to the kids. Freerun, she is not really a parent. Not for their emotional development, at least. She's the one who, like, gets them to practice the piano, <laughs> if that makes sense. She'll make sure you're going to school and developing your talents. She'll love you, she'll make sure you're fed. She'll discipline you to keep you safe. Not the parent you go to to talk to openly about confusing feelings. Sign plays that role a little bit better, I think. And he's a big softy himself. God, in real life, oh, this is terrible, terrible thought, whatever, I'm just gonna say it. In real life, this could go horribly wrong if Fern was Sight's type, age weirdness notwithstanding. Another thing related to this present dilemma or a more general application of it is some people just really need things communicated to them and i know some people feel like if a partner really cares about me they'll know what i want you know but not always the case people think differently there are different ways of expressing the thing you're really looking for which is loyalty commitment genuine affection etc etc it's such a simple concept but it's so often not understood or at least not put into effective practice it's just generally good to give people the benefit of the doubt when there's lack of evidence or information or to like discover what the other person is about through communication as cliche as that sounds free when you're getting hit with like all the ways himmel was trying to show her exactly how he felt. Also, Stark wouldn't pick up on this, but Fern showing Stark how much she cares about him by her anger at him not getting her a birthday present unsolicited. These are things that end up haunting you sometimes when you when you are hit later with things you weren't paying attention to that showed exactly how much the other person cared about you and was doing for you. A gateway into understanding this is those times when people were mad about your actions or inactions and you were kind of stunned by it because of how much you felt you were already doing. Look how much I'm sacrificing. Look how much I'm putting into this. Do you not see this, 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 all the things, all my life that I'm giving you, all of my time and energy and other things I've given up for you, you know, et cetera, et cetera, that the other person may not be seeing in that moment because there's something, there's some way they evaluate love and giving that never occurred to you that they're now making a top priority because of its absence. But then you have moments yourself where you realize, wow, I really didn't see at the time how much the person was giving to me in their own way. And when that hits you, man, is that painful? Like, yeah, I, I was so cognizant of the things I didn't like. How much attention was I paying to the ways in which they genuinely really, really loved me and cared about me? But you know, as always, it's good to have that reflection as painful as it is because it can like inform a way to push that, you know, that empathetic barrier out so that you see as much as possible of what people really are. Mm -hmm.